Hey, poker people. So let's take a look at my software setup when it comes to playing poker. Now, the first thing you see on the screen right in front of you, along with my shiny face, of course, is my uh, what my screen looks like when I'm multi-tabling. I play anywhere from two up to eight tables at a time. And so this is a basic when I have six tables right here. This is what my screen looks like. You know, the different windows, they kind of overlap over each other, but we got three across the top, three across the bottom. And this is how I end up playing poker. Depending on the size of your window, of course, if you make your windows bigger, your HUD stats appear a little bit bigger. But once you start to get really used to your different HUDs uh, and the HUD stat placement, you don't need them necessarily as big as they can be, right? Um, if you've ever seen me Twitch streaming, of course, I only play one or two tables at a time so that there's no big overlap and it's not too confusing for those watching, right? Um, but when it comes to playing on my own, my volume sessions, or just when I'm not streaming, I'll play anywhere from four to six tables. And this is what it looks like right here. So. Uh, of course, these are hand replayers. This is an act, is is obviously not an actual session going on. These are different hands that I've played utilizing Poker Tracker 4. So that's the first piece of software I want to talk to you about. Uh, I freaking love this one. This is the first software, uh, poker tracking software that I got. I've tried Hold a Manager in the past. Not a bad software at all, but Poker Tracker 4 feels a bit more intuitive to me, you know? So this is the main screen I'm always at when it comes to reviewing my hands and reviewing my stats. It is the statistics tab up at the top here. Um, I filter for whatever parameters I want to look for. And then as I'm going through hands, um, bam, I can look at them by position right here. I can even look at these uh, the different hands by session or even table session. So we can see in this current month on 326, I played for just nine minutes and I won $3.70. But over here, I played for 52 minutes on the 24th and I actually lost $19 on this one table right here. So there's different ways that you can go through and look at your hands and look at your stats. Oh, speaking of stats, let's go back to position. Now, uh, the reason why I love this uh, this grouping for the stats, the position, is because you see EPMP cutoff button, small blind and a big blind, you see all of your stats by position. So you can see if there's some kind of like big shift or big jump from uh, maybe your VPIP in the EP to the cutoff to the button or even your three betting. Like by looking at this, you can look at exactly where you're doing most of your three betting. And it's a small sample size of just 1,300 hands that I've played this month. But you can see I'm doing a ton of three betting from the cutoff for some reason um, and from the EP, which is probably just one out of three. But the SB, I've been using it probably as some uh, potentially blind stealing spots, right? So that's one of the reasons why I like Poker Tracker 4. Very easy to look at your stats to try to spot frequency issues uh, in your game. The second reason I like it is, or oh, the, the first reason was the HUD that I mentioned, but I'll get back to the HUD in a little bit. I love reviewing my stats, but I also love the fact that I can review hands and look at my mistakes. So let's take a look at this pocket nines hand right here. Um, under the gun opens to three big blinds, two folds. I'm in the small blind and I choose to call with pocket nines. I'm totally fine with that call. I could three bet here, but look, I only have 34 hands on the player. I don't know how frequently they fold to three bets. So utilizing the HUD, if I'm three betting, it's because I want him to fold, especially from out of position with pocket nines. Um, if this was pocket aces, I'd be three betting for value, aces, kings, and queens, of course. But my goal in three betting would be to get him to fold. I haven't seen him fold to three bets yet because nobody's made a three bet against him. So I just don't know how likely he is to fold. So I'd rather just call with a hand that, you know, has some showdown value and I could flop something potentially really big. So I like the call here. Um, the big blind calls behind. So we got three way to the flop. Here is the button. So I'm out of position in the small blind, of course. Seven, seven, three, flop, two hearts. I have the nine of hearts. I check, he checks, and then the opener makes a two thirds pot C bet. Now, I don't know too much about him. He's only C bet one out of five times. So it means he could have something. He could have a flush draw, a couple of overs, could have an over pair as well. But I have the over pair nines versus the seven, seven, three flop. So I decided to make the call right here. Big blind fold. So we're heads up on the turn, the jack of hearts. Now, as you can see, jack seven, three, all hearts along with the seven, all the flop. So I still have second pair, not a bad uh, hand, but I also have a flush draw nine high flush draw you could also look at that nine of hearts as a flush draw blocker in case he does have the ace of hearts or king of hearts in this instance um i check now he throws out a tiny little bit one quarter pot bet 
This could be a very cheap double barrel bluff or potentially making it look like a bluff because he just turned his full house, he turned a flush and he wants me to raise him. I'm not exactly sure. So I just take the kind of passive, not kind of, definitely passive and pot controlling route of just calling the 50 cents. The river comes a king of spades. It's a $3.10 pot, 31 big blinds right here. I did not like seeing the overcard king. I didn't want to see an ace, a king, or a queen on this river. The king comes, and he could have easily barreled with ace, king, with the king of hearts, the ace of hearts. King, queen could have barreled the flop and turn for the smaller sizing on the turn. So I decide to check, of course, with my third pair, missed flush, and he bets $3, one big blind shy, of the of a pot sized bet so of course what do i do i put him on ace king or king queen right here there's no way i can shove to get him to fold when he's committing a pot sized bet on the river so of course i fold and i'm totally good with that fold right there so that's another reason i like poker tracker 4 i can utilize the hud aspect to help me understand the way my opponents play and i can review the hands and utilize the hud at the same time right there to really dive into these hands to figure out what is going on so uh that's you know hold uh, that's po poker tracker 4. there are so many other ways to use this i don't want to show you everything right now those are just my favorite aspects to it now when it comes to that first thing I mentioned, that HUD, right? If you go to Edit HUD Profiles, um, Poker Tracker 4 comes with a lot of default HUDs inspired by Harrington, Legacy, uh, Omaha HUD, tons of different things, right, uh, for tournaments and for cash games. But as you can see here, I've created so many different HUDs myself over time. So you can select any HUD. Let's just look at the uh, Poker Tracker 4 default HUD. Now, here it is on the left. You can see they have VPIT, PFR, 3-bet, and C-bet. All standard, every HUD needs those for sure. They also have the player name, the player notes, the number of hands, which is perfect. You always want to know the number of hands you have on a player. They also have um, the number of big blinds. Now, the number of big blinds is great for tournaments, especially when the antes are going up. Not antes, I'm sorry. Well, blinds and antes. As they increase, stack sizes get smaller in terms of big blinds. But for cash games, you don't need to know the number of big blinds somebody has. You can just do the math in your head real quick, right? Um, but fold to c-bet is one of those stats within the default HUD here. Now, if we take a look at my smart HUD, my smart HUD actually has 17 different aspects to it. We've got the number of hands, the player note, the name as well, but vpit, pfr, um, fold to steal, big blind fold to small blind steal. I also have some post flop stats, C bet flop, C bet turn, and then bet river, and then fold to flop C bet, fold to turn C bet, and then fold to river bet. Those are all the post flop ones. And you can see how they're grouped. Everything is kind of related to each other with those same color backgrounds in the smart HUD there. Now, this one right here is my raise first in, fold to three bet, and then four bet stat. Those all go together. They all help you get a good read on the way your opponent um, uh, raises first in. Now, down below it is the call two bet stat as well as their three bet. Now, those are related when they're facing a bet. How do they often act? Those two stats tell me their uh, facing action frequencies there. All right, so that's the HUDs. Now, let me talk to you about my second favorite program um, available for your PC. It's Flopzilla. Now, I love Flopzilla for the equity calculations, the really easy to create ranges, and then the hand reading possibilities here. So let's take a look at that pocket nines hand once again. Uh, so this player was a 34-24 player. So he was in the hijack. Let's give him a 24% open raising range. So we'll just build it up here to roughly 26%, and then we'll add some hands in that we think they're raising with and subtract hands that they're probably not open raising with um, from that hijack position. So looking at it, we have every single ace, most broadways, 6-5 suited or better, and every pair for a 26% range. From a loose aggressive player, this makes total sense in the hijack, right? They raise such a big range because they want the cutoff and button to fold, and they want to be up against those uh, blinds, so have position on them. So I'm good with this, 26%. If we enter within Flopzilla, our hand, the pocket nines, we have 61% equity. So things are looking pretty good. We're making a call right here. Even though we're going to be out of position, we have an equity advantage versus their range right now. Um, so I'm still down with that call, like I said. Now, if we enter that board, it was a seven. I don't remember the other seven. And I think it was like a four of hearts, maybe. 
Whatever it was, there was two hearts on the board with a pair of sevens. So now our pocket nines on the 774 board has 69% equity. Things are looking really good right now. We do not mind being out of position when we have such a big equity advantage. <clears throat> especially given that he's a loose aggressive player, we can just check call on a lot of flops and turns um, and rivers as well, depending on the river card. Um, because he is such a loose aggressive player, he might be sea betting and barreling with his over cards and his under pairs, even sixes or fives, which are nines currently beat, right? So he decides to bet and then we make the call. Great, the turn was the jack of hearts putting three hearts on the board. Now. All of his potential flush draws on the flop, they just now completed. So our equity dropped to 65% or so, but it's still not bad. We check and then we call that small bet, remember? Now on that river, that king of spades came. Oh man, so what do we think at this point? What is this player making a full pot-sized bet with? Now, our equity went from 69% on the flop, 65 on the turn, to now 59% on the river. But what is he um, uh, making a pot-sized river bet with? Well, he's doing it with his quads, his full houses, his flushes. He doesn't have any straights, but he would if he had them. His three of a kinds, all those random sevens that just that hit on the flop, um, but made a small little deceptive bet on the turn. That's possible. His over pairs, pocket aces, totally betting big there to charge us. Maybe we had ace king the whole way. Maybe we had king queen and didn't want to fold. He's getting value out of those, right? Two pair hands? Sure, why not? King jack? Well, king jack beats, if I have a two pair hand of king queen, King Jack is a better two pair than my King seven with the Queen kicker. Top pair, possibly not betting that much, but he could be super excited. I just hit my top pair top kicker with Ace King. Let's put those in as well. And I don't know enough about this player. Like I said, I only have 32 hands on him. I don't really know if he bluffs rivers a lot. So I don't wanna put these potential bluffing hands and missed draws into his range, right? So let's say really, He's betting full pot with top pair or better. We only have third pair. He's got us killed. So I'm down with that fold that I made on the river. And so this is how I use Flopzilla in conjunction with Poker Tracker 4 to do hand reading exercises and to review my hands. Now, the last piece of software I want to show you is what I record all my videos and do my streaming with. Now, this is called OBS or Open Broadcaster Software. It's the software that most um, uh, most Twitch streamers use. So I record all my videos with this. I do my editing with a different program. And this is also the program that I use to... Um, uh, to record game tape with. Now, I've talked about game tape a hundred times. I love game tape for the fact that it makes you think through your hands, you're forced to speak through your decisions, to verbalize why you're making your actions. I love game tape. Even if you never put it up on YouTube for other people to watch, you never share the videos, as long as you're making it for yourself and you're utilizing it to push yourself to speak through your decisions, it's a game-changing play strategy and study strategy as well. You can watch those videos after the fact. But let me show you something here. So when you first download OBS, all of your different scenes are, there's not gonna be any scenes there, right? Let me show you how to set up a brand new scene so that you're recording your screen wherever your poker play is taking place. Let me first move this one off. All right, so in the background, whoops, let's move this too. You can see we have our different, we have our six tables going on of poker that we're playing. Now, what you're going to do first is under scenes, hit the plus button and add a new scene. I'm going to call it test, but you can call it game tape or whatever you want to do. Okay. Now, as you can see, the screen is blank because I have not set up any sources. Sources are the parts of your screen or peripheral items that, uh, that the software is recording. So the first source we'll open up is the display capture. Now you choose the display, so create a new, we're just gonna call it display capture five, okay. Now when you go here, you have display one, which is my laptop camera, or display two, which is the screen that we're on right now that you can see. Hit okay, and bam, that's there. Once I move this out of the way, you can see up top here are the first three tables of my six table session. Um, now, the other thing you want to do is the mic recording. Now, mine is already automatically set up, but you want to make sure that whatever microphone that you use, that it is recording your voice because that's critical for game tape. You want to watch it back and listen to yourself speak through your decisions so you can find any mistakes in logic or gaps in logic. 
Now, if we hit the um, uh, properties button or the settings button right here, select properties. Now from this, you can choose your different um, microphones available. Mine is the ATR2500 USB microphone. The Realtek comes directly from my laptop microphone and the webcam, the HD Pro webcam C920, it has its own microphone. I don't use any of those. The best quality is ATR. But if you have, you know, maybe um, earphones with um, some kind of uh, microphone attached to it, you would select that, right? So bam, hit OK. Now we're definitely recording our audio. You can see the little green bar going up and down right here right now. So we've got that going. Now the last thing, if you want to add a camera, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do uh, existing, where'd it go? Video capture device, existing Logitech camera. Hey, there it is. So we see me nice and big. Let's minimize this puppy back into the corner again. Great, so we see me again. Let's bring this over. Now we've got our game tape recording. Uh, if you want to do like, uh, you know, YouTube videos and stuff, that's how you would do it. Put your camera in the middle or in the bottom if you want people to see you as you play. Um, so basically, that's it. That's how you set up OBS for some quick recording. And then, of course, let me bring this back over. You just hit that start recording um, uh, to start recording your game tape. And this is one thing I highly recommend if you want to improve your game game tape. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching this little software demonstration, all the major software that I use when it comes to studying poker and playing poker. Peace.